What's up, YouTube? It is I, Embrace the Matrix, and I'm uh, coming at you on this, well, today it's Saturday, um, the 10th of the month of June, and I'm coming at you live from my office, and just have my green screen up, my, I don't have my lighting up, so there ain't gonna be no chroma key, so don't expect no crazy dragons flying around behind me and stuff. I'm just not in the mood to set everything up. <sighs> Thought I'd uh, give you guys sort of an Embrace the Matrix update and um, an experience I recently went through and I uh, thought I'd put it on my art channel because it certainly pertains to the reason I started painting and because, you know, other people can find it and maybe find some cool art to look at too if they <clears throat> come across this video and are looking for a very recent a very honest uh, description of well what the said title of this video says um, just give a quick background haven't gone into super much and I'm not going to be too specific but I've been struggling with severe depression and anxiety depersonalization and derealization for many years depression and anxiety specifically for roughly a decade of varying you know, varying uh, intensities. Um, but as of the last three to five years, roughly, things have been getting progressively worse. And um, you know, things just get more difficult as life tends to progress, I guess. And you know, if you're like me and an extremely busy person and by that I don't mean on Facebook I I truly mean I ha I've run a very successful business not this wonderful art you see here selling you know they're you might think they're flying off the walls but <clears throat> people are being awfully reserved when it comes to the purchasing of my artworks and I completely understand but rest assured they are all of one of a kind from a mentally ill individual you guys know I'm like in my 20s, right? You know, so I'm pretty young still. <laughs> Alright, maybe double it. Or triple it. Alright, fine. No, just double it. Alright, when you run a, you know, successful business as I have for over a decade that has nothing to do with the art scene or anything I even want to begin to explain. It's all very legit though, relax. The IRS knows all about me. Stresses are high. Things get crazy. Uh, oh, and if I didn't, if you didn't think so, or could see by the the time code on this video, it's probably gonna be a little longer than normal. So, if you're here, if you want to watch me ramble, that's fine. If you just want to listen, you can do that as well. <clears throat> Anywho, um, so uh, nonetheless, um, I've had issues. Um, as you know, I well, you don't know, you don't know much about my life, man. And if you're if you're of the uninformed, then let me tell you, um, I have a wife and I have a two-year-old son. Um, that this, my son, I love him with all my heart. Um, he's a pretty awesome dude, very awesome. And some would say it's fortunate. I tend to, I'm on the fence, but he looks just like me. So this could bo both be a blessing and a curse for him in the future. But, yeah, he does look an awful lot like me. Definitely not the milkman, or the mailman for that matter. This is dandelion, organic dandelion tea. Yum. When things have been crazy around the office and the, the, the house and things like that. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, sometimes I have to take a break, I have to get away. I haven't painted in a while because of other issues that I'm going through, but I'm actually going to be starting very, very soon and possibly today uh, with some things. But nonetheless, when things get pretty hectic, I tend to leave. I'll, I'll leave, I'll go, you know, stay with a friend for a day or so, and that's only as of late, and, you know, it's just kind of to decompress. Things have been exasperated, and, you know pressures of the, the, the family life, the wife, the everything, it just gets, you know, a little too much, I'm not going to go into any personal details, sorry for all you gossipers out there, 
Um, I'm just I'm just here to explain to you how I got to where I got, and <clears throat> or should I say ended up, and what my experience was there. When I would take off and split, I would just like I said go stay to friends, go catch catch a, catch a hotel room, <clears throat> um, and in this time. You know, my wife would text me and things, and, you know, unfortunately, sometimes I was mad at her, and I didn't want to talk to her, <clears throat> excuse me, or anybody for that matter, you know, but I would still text. Well, here's the thing. I hate texting. I really do. I understand. It's, you know, it's a new wave and stuff, but I really hate texting, um, and here's a per prime example, and this is what can happen in some regard when you know a text is uh, misconstrued you know when you struggle with the issues I've had you know I'm, like I said I'm not going to go in too depth into it because it's not what this video is about but you know suicidal thoughts have been a, a plague of mine uh, for for many years and my my simple thought or you know the way I look at it is you know people that know me that really know me especially my doctors know that I have no tension whatsoever of ever killing myself but unfortunately, when you get that hopeless feeling and you get, you know, <clears throat> if you're being pushed by an individual or if you're just being pushed by a situation or if you're just being, you felt like you're just being like, you know, hammered on, you know, it could make you feel pretty hopeless or if you're, you don't feel like you're doing the right thing or getting the right results or, you know, whatever, you just have a hopeless feeling. If, you're not, if you feel, don't feel sanctuary in your home, you know, you can get a hopeless feeling. It can turn into a suicidal thought. They just, they, they, they manifest themselves in the most, you know, insane ways. And I guess it's not about <clears throat> suicidal thoughts, but those of you out there that might, you know, everybody's different, you know, I, I'm not speaking for anybody other than myself, but that's certainly how I felt. You know, you can get pretty worked up and feel like that's it. I'm just going to just take it out, you know, on myself and that I'm done. You know, I'm just like, I'm punching my clock, man. It's it, you know, but it's a thought, you know you have to act on it but unfortunately those thoughts can just manifest themselves and it's not like your true intention if you know what i mean like you're, you're you're trying to get better you're not trying to feed this demon you're trying to starve it and that's the way i look at it so that's been an issue it's well known it's well documented so um you know but when you're out and you're you know say for example the wife is check, checking in on you and you know you're replying and you reply in a way that gets misconstrued again I'm not going into any specifics and stuff but nonetheless the wife misconstrued the text made a phone call and police escorted me people were concerned they made a phone call so basically that phone call led to me having very cool police I'm not going to mention any oh, I'm also not going to mention any any names of uh, any uh, facilities or any specifics of anything but the police that transported me they were uh, very cool and let me tell you you know I'm a 6'3 like 370 some pound guy um, I'm pretty I'm a pretty big guy and uh, just I'm tall and pretty towering they thought they'd have to lay me down in the back hold on a second so the police uh, that escorted me were very very cool um and basically what they told me was look we're doing a well check there's there's been you know people concerned you might be hurting yourself so you know we just want to you know if you if you voluntarily go to the hospital uh, you know, you can just go there, they'll check you out, chances are you'll be right back here in an hour or two. He goes, but if we have to forcibly take you, then it's a mandatory 72-hour hold. Basically, your standard 5150 that you hear about, like, out of California. Um, so, it's a 72-hour uh, psychiatric hold. I said, okay, well, obviously, I don't have much choice in the matter. I'm voluntarily going, <laughs> so let's go. I mean, I know, I'm, you know, I got a lot of issues, but I don't think I belong in a psychiatric, uh, you know, on a psychiatric hold. They uh, took me uh, literally like a half mile, not even, probably like a quarter mile, because where the hotel was and where the hospital was, it was like literally, I could have walked there in five minutes. So they drove me, took me in. They stuck around, 
um, because I was assuming that that they might be taking me back, but I, d- I didn't know. So um, they were sticking around for a while, and of course I had, you know, the hospital was going to check me, and they did EKG and all your vitals and things like that. Pretty standard. Um, they took my blood, but they they stuck me hard, and I've never had a problem ever giving blood. And this chick must have just not known what she's doing, because now my arm's all black and blue and shit. So this was Wednesday, um, the seventh. Yeah. So this is about five o'clock in the afternoon, four or five in the afternoon. So anyway, so the cops roll me down to the hospital, take me into thing. Um, they're checking me out and stuff, and then they say, okay, you know, your vitals and everything. You're, you seem healthy, so we're going to move you on over to psychiatry, and they're going to assess you and go from there. I talked to them. I'm pretty honest. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty shook up about the whole thing at this point because I was just chilling, lying, relaxing, doing what I do. When I get extremely overwhelmed, I just I kind of just escape. Um, so I was like, I went from being super chill to, holy shit, I got three cops in my face. Well, I'm talking to psychiatry, and I'm being pretty honest about, you know, what's been going on. And in hindsight, I, you know, maybe I should, I, if, if I didn't, here's, here's the tip, people. Don't be too honest, because they're going to lock, they're going to, they're going to, they're going to lock you up. So just, I'm just saying, you might have issues. Look, you might be going to a therapist every week. You might be going to a psychiatrist once a month, every once every three months. You know, you've been be working on your problems, <clears throat> and it's a progress, right? So, you know, you don't have to let it all out, in a sense, and to some social worker at a hospital who's going to decide your fate, basically. So that's all I'm saying. Yeah, I'm not telling you not to be honest, but I'm saying this is what happens. This is what happens when you're a little too honest. So, anyways, she she does all, you know, answers a bunch of questions and things. What's been going on? Why you're here? Tell them that stuff. They come back and say, you know what? We gotta we gotta send you in a uh, 72 hour hold. We have reason to believe you might hurt yourself. You might hurt somebody else. Basically, 5150. You're on 72 hour psych hold. This is on Wednesday. At this point, it was probably around like 6 o'clock or so, 7. So, I was like, shit. So, uh. <laughs> you gotta be kidding, right? And they're like, no. And I was already in a gown. And, I mean, I was, like, literally in a gown and my underwear, and that was it. And some some shitty hospital slipper socks. Then they're like, well, it's going to be an hour. Now, mind you, the psychiatric ward is literally in the backyard of the hospital. So, I could have, again, I could have walked there in probably three minutes. Um, <clears throat> so... Uh, but they're like, we got to wait for transport, transport, you know, they say, okay, it's going to be an hour. I'm like, holy crap, man. I'm like, so it, it was, it was a good hour. So I'm laying in a room, laying in a bed, just going, fuck, what the hell? Um, you know, of course, I mean, of course I called my wife. I wasn't too happy about where she, you know, in a sense put me, but nonetheless, where I'm at's where I'm at. So I'm just like, well, here's what's up. They're, they're, they're admitting me. Uh, 72 hour hold you know I guess we're going to see what happens this is all new to me so um, and y'all know I'm in northeast Ohio it's about as most as detailed as I'll get you about where I'm located geographically transport comes great you know okay so I'm a big guy right you know hey I've, I've, I've been a big guy my whole life never never stopped me from doing anything going anywhere achieving anything but this place had some rickety old, uh, um, you know, they got to transport you in a gurney, and it was some rickety old, like, gurney. I mean, this is a nice hospital. This isn't some rinky-dink hospital. And I'm like, man, they just showed up with this, like, like bucket truck. It was like Sanford and Son, kind of. Like, it was like an ambulai or something, or ambulay or whatever they call it. It wasn't really a true ambulance. Um, looked like one. But anyway, so... You know, I got in this thing, they strapped me down, they had to get a few extra people to help lo- hoist me up, because, you know, I'm a big dude, so that was just a, a tinge humiliating, but what are you going to do? Um, I'm And I'm just like, dude, I can walk there. <laughs> He's like, I know, man. The guy was cool, though. He was just like, dude, this I think this is dumb, dude. You should be able to be transported in a car. You shouldn't have to be put on a gurney and then, you know, hoisted in this thing to literally drive a quarter mile. You know, he goes, we could walk there in like five minutes. I'm like... 
let's do it, man. I'm up for the stroll, dude. So, nope, got to be strapped in, got to do all that. So, you know, they had to get help. It was, like, really humiliating. What are you going to do, you know? So I got through that. Then, of course, you get to the fucking hospital, which only took us, oh, I don't know, like two minutes to drive. Um, so it was a fun little ambulance ride. I think it's my first. So got to the hospital or the um, psychiatric ward, which they always look so nice on the outside. You know, they got like, you know, it looks like a little house. You know, they got like siding and, you know, like nice uh, like bushes and shrubs and things. And you're like, wow, this place looks nice. And you get inside and it's just like. I mean, it's not like it's gross, but it's like, oh, that's where the evil is. <laughs> they make it look all pretty on the outside. But the true the true trauma, the true terror, the true, you know, misery is, is just behind these doors. So, you know, they, of course, they take you in the back, drop off them crazy people in the back. Of course, they needed help again, lowering the gurney and stuff. No, you know, another humiliating episode. This, this is a lot of humiliation in it for me, I felt. Um, because especially since it was such a short distance, um, I could have just hopped in the back seat of somebody's car. <laughs> it would have been so much, it had taken less time and it had been a lot less degrading, I felt. Um, so got there and of course there, it was like, now nah, at this point it's probably like nine o'clock or so. So it's pretty late, getting late. Um, so I'm just like, you know, it's like, um kind of like an L, like almost shaped like 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 this like well, this, this is terrible it's like a vagina um but it was like you know i don't know how to do it but i'm an idiot like kind of like whatever like a 90 degree thing so you had two main halls and rooms down each hall and then you had a day room and then you had like the nurse's desk station which was crazy because they had like this huge plexiglass like shroud basically which I get man because if people start throwing shit and you don't want to get hit by some anything whatever I'll put you know I'll get into why that's not going to really happen um and of course you know they got this big ass TV big flat screen and it's it's encased in plexiglass I mean ain't nothing damn damage to that like half inch plexiglass of course when they first get you in there um they have to search you so you got to pretty much show them, show them the goods and they got to make sure you're not, you know, hiding anything anywhere, um, you know, cigarettes or weapons or anything. Then they search your body for scars. And I mean, they search your body. They look at every little thing, every little, they make note of it, of, you know, and if you all have watched my other videos, you know, I pick at the bottom of my feet pretty, pretty you know, grotesquely, so I had band-aids on, and I was like, look, I go, I, I mess up my feet, I got band-aids, it's this, this run is pretty well healed, but I still have band-aids, they gotta look under the band-aids, so they peeled up all my band-aids, which, unfortunately, I have, you know, I even have some right here, you know, I mean, it was rough, it's been a rough few last few days, this is all happening you know one right after another take your vitals things like you know and they check you um and they show and then they take me down the hall they show me my room and you know i don't know what to expect and uh because at that point i wasn't even thinking about all the movies i've seen you know and stuff like i hadn't thought about it yet so i could have been sort of prepared and like the, the reality shows and like the celebrity you know lunatic fringe or show or whatever the fuck they had you know we're like like four of the people that were on that show have already killed themselves good job dr drew way to help those celebrities more like exploit their uh mental issues way to go or addictions asshole so they take me down to the room and they're like oh there's your roommate he's already sleeping and i'm like "Ooh, roommate Oof, great so he's snoring away and then they go okay there's your bed and it was literally, the bed was literally a, a, a rectangular wooden box with what, equ what equated to a little bit, a little bit bigger than a to uh, tofu, a futon mattress on it with, you know, a, a sheet, a blanket, and two pillows. And the pillows were about that big. <laughs> so, yeah, you needed at least two for proper neck adjustment. So I was like, ooh, this sucks. 
So then they take me and show me around. Okay, here's uh, the two group rooms where they have a uh, daily group. Here's the, the cafeteria. It's closed right now. You know, but if you want something to eat, we can get you a sandwich or something. I was like, man, I'm cool. I just, what's next? Like, I'm ready to go chill, I guess. Okay, here they give you toiletries. So they give you, I, I should have brought them so I could show you. But it's, you, you can get the idea. It's like worse than like travel size shit. It's just like generic roll-on deodorant. This is literally what you got. You got uh, two little bars of like soap, like the shitty hotel soap from like back in the day. Um, you got a toothbrush that was like almost paper thin plastic. So there, there was like no way you're going to like gnaw that thing into a shank or something. Cause like you, every time you like brush your teeth, it was just like, you know what I mean? It was just the ridiculous. Um, you got a little tube of toothpaste. Uh, I didn't realize right away, which was cool. Cause I didn't even look at any of this stuff. Uh, you got a bottle of mouthwash, you got a bottle of body lotion and, uh, yeah, that was, and uh, and then wrapped around it was slipper, you know, the slipper grip hospital socks with a rubber band around it. Like, they had them all on the shelf. Like, here's, they literally hand, then after they showed me around, like, okay, here's, uh, you know, here's your uh, toiletries. Here's a couple towels. Here's a couple hand towels. Good night. They sent me down the hall. And man, it's, it, 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 I'm not kidding you. It felt like, like in those prison movies and shit where they're like, all right, here's your here's your fucking shit now. Go down there and I mean I was stripped of everything. Oh, I forgot to even mention that. Yeah, I had nothing. I mean, I was still in a gown and underwear. You don't get no cell phone. You don't get nothing with strings. Clothes. They go through your clothes. They go through all your shit. They go through your wallet, your purse, whatever you got. I found that out later, which I assume that they would. They they documented everything. Although I think they should have done that in front of you. You know, showing here's where, you know, here's what you had when you came here. And you can go, okay, instead of they just say, okay, here's what you had. And then you got to remember, you know, when you get out of there, like, okay, does I have, a, does I have everything? You know, but whatever. So walking down that hall was pretty scary. I got to be honest, because I was like, wow, okay, so here, I'm here. Um, didn't know what to expect. So anyway, so I go and I lay down and. I gotta be honest, I started really missing my kid, and I started freaking out, and I just started crying my eyes out. I, I'm straight up. Big guy, yeah, tough dude, whatever. I started crying my eyes out. I was absolutely miserable. Um, I stared pretty much the entire time I was there. I spent in my room, but I stared at the bookcase. Um, there was a, or it was a, yeah, it was like a tall bookcase is where you put your clothes and, you know, your little hygiene pack or whatever. So at least your breath will smell good and your pits will smell good, whether or not you take a shower, because they did have showers there. Um, but yeah, the room had just a bed, the shitty bed. You had your bookcase. You had a they had, they had a big heavy wood desk and a and big heavy wood chairs. And of course, the reason they have big heavy furniture so you don't go throwing it around. And I mean, these were heavy wood chairs. I, they were definitely probably like almost like Amish made or something. They were just straight wood no cushion no nothing just i mean you could sit down there's two beds you know because you know you have a roommate and that was that was an experience in of itself because you got to remember i've run a business for the last 11 years i'm an introvert i've ran this business out of my home you know i don't have in all honesty a, a, a plethora of friends um i have a couple people that i know i could count on if i needed to but for the most part, yeah, it's just me, the fam, and the, the people that work with me. So, you know, uh, nonetheless, I haven't been around a whole lot of people. You know, I've been doing the battles with my depression and stuff. But, you know, on, on my own, with, you know, very limited support. Or not even support, but just very limited people to support is a better way to put it. Because I do feel that, you know... If you're around people and they keep you kind of upbeat, you know, or at least kind of, you know, get you something to do. I think when you sit around talking and, I mean, sit around thinking and, you know, you don't do much, I don't think that's very helpful. I think you need to be sort of somewhat constructive. I literally, for the first time in my life, cried myself to sleep. I've never done that in my entire life. I was that upset. And, you know, you know, I, my, my father passed away when I was young and 
I've had friends pass away and stuff. I, I've, I've dealt with loss. I know what, it, you know, I know what grief feels like. I know what despair feels like. I, you know, my whole life is, uh, is, has been one constant struggle, one challenge after another. And I have pretty done pretty well at achieving them. But this mental health issue has been something that's been a hell of a lot harder for me to kick the shit out of, so to speak. So anyway, so I lay there. And I granted, I don't know, it's pitch black, it's, you know, it's pretty dark in the room. I looked in the bathroom and there was towels on the floor and the toilet was, seat was kind of grungy. Like, if he'd been using it, he ain't been cleaning it or just keeping it clean. The, the bathroom was disgusting from, from the jump. So I went in there, had to go pee. So I went pee. You know, they even have the whole back of the toilet all boxed in. Um, you know, you have hot and cold water, you know. Um, so I guess you could scald yourself if you wanted to. I don't know what they're going to do. Take away your hot water. Um, if you want to hurt yourself, that is. Not that I'm giving anybody any ideas. So, some things that they let you not have and some things they gave you access to just didn't make sense to me. So I went and peed. Of course, I used the old foot to the lever action because already I was disgusted. And there was a shower in there. It's a little stand-up stall. And I was going to... I thought about maybe I'd be using it, but then I realized that would mean I'd have to walk somehow on this floor. Uh-uh. And I don't want to be hopping and shit and slipping. And the, it was what I thought was kind of weird, but I understood why. The, the top of the, the bathroom door, it had a slant cut. So, yeah, you could easily get up in there if you had to or something. So that, and I think you couldn't tie a noose, you know? But then the main door didn't have that slant. So, that's what I thought it was, was like, because there's no locks on the doors, it's not like, you know, they couldn't bust in on you taking a shit. And eventually I fall asleep. So then I wake up, and it's still night, no light. I hear somebody yelling, rapping. Turns out it's my roommate, who's apparently awake, and he's rapping out loud, loud. So obviously, you know, he's a brother, which is cool. I like that that cool, smooth, black style. Not that obnoxious, N-word style. I like that cool, smooth, you know, because you're never going to be as cool or as slick as, as the brothers and the sisters, for that matter. So I'm like, all right, so I, I, hopefully this guy is cool, and he's not like some crazy, one of those, like, Black Lives Matter hotheads, you know, and I'm like, oh, boy. So he's rapping. That's what I woke up to. And I was like, wow, this is crazy. So I'm just going to lay here and just be quiet, which is what I did. And, you know, and then he would just get up, go to the bathroom, didn't close the door, didn't care. Just went in there, took a piss, came out, was talking, making noise. And then he'd go back to sleep. And then he got back up. And I was still awake because I was like freaking like, oh, man, this is already getting kind of weird. And I was like, man. It'd be weird enough if I had my own room by myself, but the fact that I had a roommate, I was like, this is going to fucking suck. I'm just not social like that. If you know me, you know, I'll talk and stuff, but I know what situation I'm in. I'm not in here with, like, entrepreneurs of the fucking world, dude. I know these are a bunch of, you know, and, you know, I knew it was a general psychiatric ward, so you have all types. It's not like all these people are depressed and have anxiety. I mean, you have schizophrenics and all kinds of, you know, wackaloons, wackin' Jews, or whatever George Crown said, wackaloons. Um, so you're going to have a mixed bag of issues. And then the guy woke back up, and I was kind of laying to my side, and he came over and looked over me and was like, hey, man, are you okay? And I was like, yeah, I'm cool. And he went back over in his bed and laid down. And I was like, oh, shit. Okay. He was checking on me. That's good. It's a good sign. Um, but I was like, man, this is crazy. So anyways, uh, and this, you know, this is in the, the wee hours of the morning. I fell back asleep. I woke up to him making all kinds of racket. I mean, this guy was just loud. Everything he did, putting his clothes on, doing this. And so I, the way I was laying, I seen him get up and he would literally, I mean, this is why I, I'm telling you, this is why I love them slick brothers. Um, he had he had clothes because you could have clothes as long as they didn't have strings or anything that could you could hurt yourself with. So, but he had clothes and he literally would take all the sh the sheets and the blankets and like wrap them around his head, 
almost he almost looked like an Arab or a Muslim, but he'd have him like weaved through his hoodie and his shirt, and I mean, I, he really made it like a garb. And he had like two pairs of glasses, like sunglasses, and he'd put one pair up here, and then he'd be wearing one pair. And then I kind of looked over and saw this guy walking out all in this garb, and I was like, oh, shit. Okay. Cool. Uh, is he Muslim? I was like, maybe he's like dressing that way because he feels more comfortable, and maybe that's his garb. I don't know. You know, I don't, I don't know. I never really asked him either. Um, because he, he, it, it turned out they put me in the room with the most obnoxious, loudest, instigating, argumentative person in that entire place. So, yeah, so real quick, every time he would go and get in a verbal tiff with somebody else, another guy usually, you know, I'd hear him yelling and screaming. Well, they'd cool him out, and then he'd come back in the room, and I would always be laying on my side to my back to him like, please don't fucking... Please don't fuck with me, dude. I'm just laying here. Um, but anyways, so yeah, they um, you know, I'm not gonna sit here and actually. I, I feel like I'm going through like everything that happened, and I don't know if you guys really want to hear that much um, of detail. Now that I think about it, um, I could kind of pick up the pace a little. I don't know. It's 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 the day after I got released, so I wanted to get this out and re- get it recorded while it was fresh in my head because believe me when I say I'm doing everything I can to forget this fucking experience they announce over the speaker breakfast is being served I'm free I'm still I'm up but I'm still freaking I'm a little teary eyed still and uh, I'm like I'm not getting up um they they somebody came by uh earlier in the morning to bring your pills if you have early morning pills which I do um they'd come by wake you up take your pills I asked her what time it was. She's like, you want me to tell you? And I said, sure. She's like, it's 10 to 6. I'm like, oh, oh, well. All right. She's like, and she just said, sweet dreams. Very cool. So that's when I went back to sleep. And then I woke up to seeing dude, like, heading out basically to breakfast in his full um, psychiatric ward garb. Uh, so I was like, ooh, I'm dealing with a real character here. That's cool. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm an artist. I like the creativity. But again, I didn't know what was if there was a meaning behind it, or maybe it was just cold. I don't know. So, didn't make it to breakfast. Uh, saw, uh, you know, eventually, you know, of course they come in, your staff come in and check on you. You know, you don't have anything. It's not like now, when you wake up in the morning and what's the first thing you grab? Your stupid cell phone. No cell phone. No TV. No nothing. Nothing. I mean, in some regard, it's kind of like that Fight Club sort of like materialistic shit be gone, you know, uh, mentality. And it, it, it's a hard slap of like, yeah, I mean, if you're a smoker, you ain't smoking, you know. If you're a drinker, you ain't getting any drinks, you know, or whatever your thing is. Nope. Instant. Gone. And I mean, I'm not addicted to my phone, but because I run a business, I conduct business through my phone. Like, at least 50% of the things I do business-wise are through my phone. So not having access to that for three days, roughly, is not going to, you know, had that already had my anxiety level raising because I'm like, I, I, they're not, they're not, they don't give you your phone. You, you you have what clothes you have and if they let you you know if they check out your clothes and say you can wear this shirt and whatever they'll give it to you you know as long as it doesn't have a string or anything that can hurt you so yeah I didn't make the breakfast went saw my doctor psychiatrist early that day um, talked to him told him what was up uh, you know he said I might be able to let you go on Friday he goes but technically technically we don't count the weekends, so you'd have to be here till Monday at seven, because I came in on Wednesday at seven. So like you, you might, you know, you might very well have to be here till Wednesday at seven, or on Monday. So that meant I would have to stay the weekend there. Let me tell you, I, as far as I'm concerned, I was there three freaking days, just not three full days. But believe me, it was it was more than enough. So then lunchtime comes, and I'm like, okay, great, I'm gonna try the lunch. Well, it's I'm like, I'm, at that point, I was kind of hungry, and I'm supposed to eat with my pills that I take. And, of course, they make you take your pills. You have to go up to the nurse's station, like you see in the movies, 
take your pills, drink the water, so they can see you took them. I mean, you don't have to stick, at least I didn't. They didn't say make me open my mouth or anything. Um, but I'm sure they could if you're, like, suspect of not, you know, taking your pills or, like, cheeking them or something and then spitting them out. I want my pills because <laughs> they, they actually help the ones I'm on now. So I was like, cool, you know, I mean, scan your barcode, which is pretty much what you have on your wrist, and then you get your pills. Um, but I went to lunch, and for lunch, it was uh, your options. This is what you got. This is this is what they laid out. They laid out breaded chicken breast that looked kind of weird, um, sweet potato, mashed sweet potatoes, mixed vegetables, and pierogies. And everybody was excited about the pierogies. Like, they were... The, the, everybody, the staff and the, uh, the, the ten, I was going to say tenants, the patients, everybody was excited. I'm like, okay, cool. So I'm like, yeah, I'll have some of everything. And, oh, no chicken. I was like, no chicken because the chicken was small. look weird. It's like cafeteria food. This is the best meal I ate the whole time I was there. All, of course, all they give you is a plastic, shitty plastic fork and knife. People are like, what am I going to cut the pierogies with? And I'm just thinking, use the spoon. It all tasted pretty bland and pretty nasty. Um, one night for dinner, we had Salisbury steak, which was absolutely disgusting. Um, but, I mean, you know, it's either that or a shitty turkey sandwich, which you would think, I'll have to go with a shitty turkey sandwich, but, you know, I don't know. I don't like shitty bread, <laughs> and it was definitely that. Um, so, yeah, the, the food there was absolutely wretched. I had a breakfast. It was horrible. Um, they had oatmeal. It didn't even look like oatmeal. It looked like somebody took a, a bag of Quaker Oats and dumped it in milk, stirred it up, and said, here you go. It was just, it was, not, I'm like, that's not oatmeal. <laughs> but I tried it, one spoon, and it was disgusting. Basically, you know, you're on a routine, you know. I mean, you're there in a routine. They have groups. They, they, you don't have to go to groups. They don't force you at all to go to groups, which was nice. They have them, like, hourly, roughly, every hour and a half or so. Um, so you can go and talk to people. I talk with nobody. Uh, I virtually, I ult ultimately, I didn't leave my room the entire time I was there. I pretty much laid in bed. But there was incidents while I was there. My roommate was extremely verbose, outspoken. You know, I, I don't know if, you know, you're, you're dealing with people of all different kinds of mental issues. You don't know any of these people. You don't know what might set them off. You don't know what might trigger them so that was my tactic I, I didn't expect to be there more than three days of course once then I found out it was going to be potentially a weekend nonetheless I didn't want to I mean short of saying hi in that you know excuse me polite conversation I really wasn't interested in making for even short term friends you would hear outbursts you would hear people getting to, you know other patients arguing with other patients and getting pretty heated um, and then, of course, if it, if it got really escalated, um, the day I left, Friday morning, they, the lady came in with my discharge papers and uh, right, uh, I'm going to bounce around a little bit and tell you just some experiences that went on there that I would just were pretty unnerving. All of a sudden, one of the bigger guys, I was probably the biggest guy there. There was another guy that was a little, you know, he was in better shape than me. He was a big guy, but in a lot better shape he was yelling at somebody and it was loud and all of a sudden the chick was talking to me and she's like i'll be right back and went out in the hall and then it was just the guy was barking at somebody about his mom and he needs he's got a car he needs to leave or something i'm like i don't know i'm just sitting in my room like i'm just i'm standing here man behind this big ass door and don't come fuck with me dude so the thing seemed to calm down and she's like okay come out and i went out in the hall I was walking down, and then he started up again. So, like, everybody kind of, like, froze and paid attention, you know, obviously. Not that they weren't paying attention to him, but, you know, there was a lot of people in the area. And he started barking again. The psychiatrist, the head psychiatrist, he was backing up, like, and they're like, they're like, Chuck, go to your room. You know, can you please go to your room? And I was like, no problem. So I went back to my room. They're like, we'll come get you. No problem. So I went back there. They did call the cops. The guy seen the cops walked down the aisle because I think that they were going to, you know, I, th I don't know if he swung on anybody. I think he might have. it, You know, and of course that's assault no matter which way you look at it. So, but they didn't take him away. Um, he actually did calm down. Uh, one night, and it was probably like two and three in the morning, 
all of a sudden some a girl because there was girls and guys in there uh a girl started I, I couldn't tell if she was screaming rape or rick to be honest with you but she was t- blood curdling screams rape, 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 rape. and i'm like i woke up you know my cool dude my cool roommate woke up my cool crazy roommate woke up and he ran to the door and i was like is, there, is it okay do we have to run you know like i don't know is there a fire i mean i <laughs> literally woke me up out of a dead sleep and then it stopped and, and he was like i don't know all i heard was someone yelling right 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 woke me up i was like yeah me too said, all right fuck it and just turn over and go back to sleep so you you have that you have some like you know uh you, you don't know what's I, so I don't know if somebody's having a nightmare or you know because there there was arguments in the cafeteria and I mean this is a suburban psychiatric ward I can only imagine if I'd gone to a county one uh, or a state you know run or something that's got to be way worse um, the one thing that kind of bugged me is when I when uh, the staff I talked to I pointed out the bathroom I was like I mean that ba- I go that bathroom's you know, she was asking me how I'm doing and stuff, and I was like, it's all right, I'm not used to this, you know, way of things, and uh, I'm pretty uneasy, and, you know, uh, my anxiety's pretty high. I go, but, like, that bathroom's pretty trashed, you know, it's pretty grody, I'm not too comfortable really going in there, and all she did was look and go, yeah, he's he's pretty well made himself at home, and that was it, and it was like, Oh, okay. So, like, nobody goes in there and cleans it, and they didn't. Nobody came in. The only thing is, housekeeping would come and empty the garbage can. They didn't vacuum. They didn't... Yeah, obviously, you don't change your sheet daily. Fine. But, yeah, they didn't go in and, like, pull the old nasty towels off the floor and stuff, which I thought was weird. Or to have... A, my thing was, like, why, why is there a rule you have to, like, keep it clean? Don't don't act like you're at home that was my biggest complaint the whole experience from start to finish was um for me it was extremely humiliating on on a very small level degrading i mean they didn't when you're at the um uh um psych uh, psychiatric ward uh the psychiatric hospital you know they're not they, everybody was nice the entire staff was super nice for what they're dealing with I mean, you're you're dealing with a lot of people that got mental issues that stem from you don't know what. And believe me, what what you know, I I know to some degree what my mind stem from, you know, but you don't know what theirs are. It sometimes you're not there long enough. I mean, granted, a lot of people are there for that three days and they can get their issues worked out. I gotta be honest, it it shook me up pretty bad. And I mean, I'm, I'm a, you know, even with the issues I'm having and, and, and the things that I've been doing, and if you followed any of my stuff and, or even talked to me or emailed me or anything, like a lot of you have, you know, I respond to all messages and emails, you know, uh, you know, shit's been pretty bad and for me, and I, I just been struggling to get, get by. I can tell you this much, the experience was, was, was very, was horrible. I mean, it was, I never, ever want to experience it again. I, I have my issues. You know, my wife, I've explained it to her what, what I went through. She's, she's been very apologetic, which I appreciate because it's not, wasn't her intention. You know, when she called, she was just concerned. You know, I chalk it up at this point to life experience. And to be honest with you, I'm just trying to forget it. If you guys have spe- any more specific questions about my experience or how, you know, procedures or whatever else, you know, I'll, I'll talk to you, but I, I mean, I gave you some of the highlights of what went on. And if you're like me, where things got escalated and all you wanted to do is just get away, like, I didn't want to be combative. I just wanted to leave before things got potentially combative. You know, if things get, any any fight can get escalated. I don't care who you are. If it's two guys, a guy and a girl, two chicks, I mean, you could start at one just talking and then yelling, and then next thing you know, you could be throwing shit. I mean, things can get out of hand quickly once you're upset. So I I like to leave. Overall, it was an extremely horrific experience for me. The thing that upset me the most was missing my son. Everybody I talked to at the hospital, everybody, every time I talked to the doctor, um, you know, I 
I would just break down into tears when I talked, you know, when that, when it came to my son or when they asked, you know, how I'm feeling and stuff. And I would just tell him I miss my son because I love my son. I love playing with him. I love, he's just super cool. And I mean, come on, he looks like me. I mean, it's like I'm having your own little mini me. I honestly thought I was going to have to stay there until Monday. So I was making preparations Thursday night in my mind. Like, okay, well, my thought was if I'm going to have to stay here, I'm going to have to do some groups and do something because time goes so slow. You don't know how slow time can go until you have no access to nothing. I mean, if you like zone it out on TV, I mean, there was a TV pretty much, and that was it. I mean, they might have some, like, games and stuff. I'll be honest, I didn't even step foot in a day room. I, I literally would go, when they paged me for medicine or whatever, I would go take care of what it was and go right back to my room. I, sp I slept during the day. I, I did everything I could to do was, was just lay and sleep. Um, I wrote some song lyrics and, and worked on some things, and I did some art sketching, which, you know, I, I might, you know, uh, uh, post a picture somewhere of my doodles on uh, uh, what I did, because, you know, you do, they'll give you a pen. It's, like it's, little it's basically just like the cartridge, you know what I mean, like the inside of a pen. So it's, like, flimsy, and you got to, like, write, like, retarded, but... I mean, it's better than nothing. You know, they're not going to give you a sharp pencil. Ah, but I will tell you, this is the exact question I heard a patient ask a nurse or a, a staff member. And I heard it was a guy, and he said, can we use a straight razor to shave in here? And she's like, no. <laughs> she's like, we have an electric razor you can use to, you know, trim, but you get no razor. Uh, not even a razor, but a straight razor. You can't have a string, but you can have a straight razor. I don't know. That just seemed like the st even for a, even for a psychotic sociopath, schizophrenic. That seemed like a fucking dumb question. Believe me when I say, even at this point, there's it's there's there's I, there's nothing. There's very little to laugh about. Um, it, it was a very frightening experience. I didn't like any of it. I like my freedom. I don't like being under control and being... I mean, I couldn't have gone anywhere. There's no escape. And believe me, I looked. You have to go through double security doors. I mean, it's not like it's a high security, but they're not letting you outside. They let you out on a patio, but that's it. it there's no, like, yard time. But it felt very much like prison. I, I, I could very much say it, it's probably the closest thing to prison. I've been in jail many times and done a couple, you know, double overnighters, but this is different the one good thing that came out of it was it really let me put into perspective what matters most the most important things are not things the most important thing for me at that point was to see my kid they even offered to bring him they would have let me see him they would have they said they would have closed the they would have you know pretty much locked us in the cafeteria and i could have visited with my kid but there was no way i've had to say good night to my son every night but I rarely have to say goodbye, and I definitely wouldn't want to have to just... I, I didn't want to see anybody. I didn't really want to talk to anybody. You know, I was in a... I almost felt worse when I was there because you're isolated. I mean, I mean, it's one thing to, like, step out of your normal, lifely headaches and, like I said, like, get an escape, go stay with a friend for a day, go stay in a hotel room, whatever... But it's under your control. You know, if you want to up and go to the McDonald's, you can. If you want to go smoke a joint, you can. If you want to go have a drink, you can. You know, when you're in this situation, there's none of that. You're stripped of everything, literally, um, to some regard. But people could bring you, I will tell you this, people could bring you clothes and stuff. And you could have, like, books. You could have people bring you things. What matters most to me is my son, my family, and, you know, our future. I continually play music, uh, entertain my son. Um, and hopefully become a better artist and a more successful one, which would be great. Um, but I'm getting back into the art. So this was more like and talk about my you know, psychiatric hospital experience versus an update of a brace the matrix. But yeah, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, the matrix has been going through some rough times. And believe me when I say this is no joke. This is very for real. I know I haven't been on much social media and I know I haven't been putting out many videos, but that's all about to change because I'm getting back into art.
I'm getting back into painting. I'm getting back into it. I had to take sort of a leave of absence for a while. I did do a lot of thinking and, you know, made a few decisions along the way of what I want to do and, and how I want to be going forward. Rest assured, it's all very positive. That was my, uh, my psychiatric hospital experience. I've, I've lived uh, a pretty extraordinary life. Uh, and by extraordinary, I don't mean positive and wealthy. I mean uh, fairly rough and challenging. I've told people many times that personally know me that the first person to betray me was my mother. When you, when you lose the trust of the woman that birthed you, it makes it very difficult for other people to gain your trust. So thanks for watching. Thanks for listening to me go on about this story and what I've been through recently. Um, it is, uh, you know, Saturday the 10th. And, um, yeah, uh, I'm still pretty shook up. And, uh, I'm, you know, you know. Just do your best to get through every day. You're going to have challenges and it's not necessarily going to be easy. But God, look at it this way. If you, you know, if you wake up and open your eyes, you're, you're alive for another day and you got another day to do something awesome. So do something awesome. There's going to be a lot of editing in this fucking video. I ha and even they even said when I was there, like, oh, you've been going to therapy for years. You have a psychiatrist. I'm like, yeah. They're like, oh, so you're working on your stuff. And I was like, exactly. And they were kind of like, some of the people I talked to, the doctors, or not doctors, but the staff, were like, kind of like, why are you here? And I was like, a misinterpreted text is why I'm here.